The story of clean water in the Hartford region begins and ends with the Connecticut River. For almost a century, towns, cities, and factories in four states dumped their sewage into the Connecticut River, sending it downstream to become someone else's problem. The history of the Connecticut is a lot like the major rivers throughout the country. We have raw sewage running into our rivers. And so, the first water pollution control facility was built on the Connecticut River in 1938 by Hartford's MDC. By the early 70s, waterways around the country were overrun with sewage. In response, Congress passed the Federal Water Pollution Control Act, commonly known as the Clean Water Act, with the stated goal of restoring and maintaining the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of our nation's water. Today we have the most modern wastewater treatment system that is so mechanically and technologically intricate, it brings students inside to learn about what goes in there, if they can stand a few unpleasant smells. Point to which one is plant water or which one is potable water, meaning it comes out of the sink. It really is a manufacturing operation. We have thousands of pieces of equipment uh, and all the process controls, automation, uh, and everything comes together to clean the water. This single plant treats about 60 million gallons of water a day. But the process itself is very natural. A big part of treating the waste is removing nitrogen to prevent what's called nutrient pollution, one of America's most widespread environmental problems. The wastewater treatment plant revolves around biology and the microbes that are there to help digest the, the waste and get rid of the nutrients. It really, in many ways, is a natural process that we just try and speed up. When this river system is carrying less nutrients down to Long Island Sound, Long Island Sound gets healthier, and Long Island Sound gets to be a more important economic engine and can continue to grow and produce ecological abundance, which produces recreational abundance, which produces economic abundance, which produces a higher quality of life. But despite all our new technologies and progress, the Connecticut River is still threatened by a common event we can't control, rainfall. In Hartford, as in many of America's older cities, even a small amount of rain can cause combined wastewater and stormwater to overflow into waterways without any treatment. Over the course of a year, about one billion gallons overflow into the Connecticut River. The sewer system built in Hartford in the 1850s uses a single pipe buried beneath the streets for both sewer water and the runoff. Our average daily flow might be 60 million gallons a day, but during a wet weather period, we could treat in this facility upwards to 130 or 140 million gallons a day of wastewater. But a solution is in the works, a massive over $2 billion solution called the Clean Water Project. The MDC's Clean Water Project is a dramatic undertaking that uses multiple components to address the storm and sanitary sewer overflows. From the separation of the combined sewers in the street to the expansion of the capacity of the treatment plants in Hartford and Rocky Hill to building an innovative storage and conveyance tunnel large enough to store over 40 million gallons during storms and then slowly release to the treatment plant the MDC would not be able to take on such a project without the cooperation and coordination of our customers and our communities. That's why, although it's important to get the project done, we try to mitigate the effects on our customers as much as possible with our project outreach. It will take time, digging and building, but the efforts will have far-reaching effects for our health, environment, and economy. What we do isn't just local but it really does infect the entire water cycle. We're all part of the problem, and we're all part of the solution, and we're all part of the successes. We all live downstream.